has dropped down to dropped down to zero. Now it's jumped up. It's all over the place. So the, the, the question now is, is the high pressure fuel pump supplying too much fuel and my rail pressure reading is correct? Or is it providing not enough fuel and my rail pressure reading is incorrect? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Simply Diagnostics video and today we're in another bright and sunny day in Cheshire it's actually raining, it's been raining all day it's now about 4 o'clock in the afternoon and I've had enough, I want to go home but the good news is we've got, uh, we've got a fix on the, uh, on the RS, on the Ford RS so let me talk you through what we've done ready for the mark on the camera lens, I've just got rain on it you can see it's actually running quite nice and smooth now. Live data, the low pressure side there, and the high pressure. No fault. And if we stop that, we're using the force scan here. If we stop that and we go into DTCs, let's just have, have a look at the PCM. And then we read PCM, no errors. So Stevie's a very, very happy bunny. So the fault was actually the high pressure pump had failed. We weren't getting any lift pump, but the main cause of it was incorrect readings for that little fella down there for the fuel rail pressure if you look at the fuel rail pressure now steady 0 0.6 0 0.7 of a volt the car's very very happy it's been down the road so our actual fault was the fuel rail pressure sensor and we also had a second fault where we had a high pressure pump it's been failing and obviously once the work has been done it's fine, we'll give the ghost stuck. So there's no DTCs and uh, what I'm going to do, um, obviously now because it's literally, it's, it's a really, really miserable day. Um, what I'm going to do now, we're going to get it all boxed up, it's going to go for an extended road test. And then on the end of this video, I'll actually walk through the diagnosis, through the wiring diagrams, what we would expect to see in that. If the weather had been a lot better, then I'd have probably got all the kit out and scoped it and all that. But at the minute, um, we've just got the sacrificial laptop that's getting wet. So we're actually looking now, we're actually looking at a wiring diagram from all data one of our community partners and we're looking directly at the rail pressure sensor which is here we can see we've got pin 1 pin 2 pin 3 we've got the green wire which is shared by another component going back to the ECU we've got the yellow wire going back to the ECU also shared with other components so we know that one of those is going to be the earth and one of them is going to be the 5 volt reference and then we've got the blue wire here on pin 2 which is actually the only wire that's, that's not going into another circuit and it's going all the way back to the ECU and then the good thing about the Ford diagrams is it actually tells us what the, what the wires are doing so for example the green wire here we can actually see but it's the VREF, so that's the 5 volt. We can see then that the yellow green wire which is here um, is actually what they're saying is a signal return, yeah, so a ground. And then finally the blue wire which is going from pin 2 back to pin 37 is actually clearly identified FRP fuel rail pressure. 
so using the wiring diagram we can very very quickly ascertain what we are expecting to see on that fuel rail pressure sensor when we're testing it so that that goes into the what are we testing why are we testing it what we're we expecting to see and will it give us a pass fail so we're testing a three wire pressure sensor um, that's measuring uh, fuel pressure uh, why are we testing it because we want to validate that the wires are okay the sensor is capable of returning a, an accurate signal that directly corresponds or um, is related to how much pressure is actually in the rail and we also then want to make sure that that information that sensor is sending back is actually getting all the way back to the ECU so we're looking at inputs for the sensor and output for the sensor the sensor output then becomes an input for the ECU so all we're looking at is a set of inputs and output the wires that carry that and we're verifying that they're okay and that will enable and that will enable us to very quickly narrow down what the problem is and do we need to replace the sensor or do we need to look further at the wiring or indeed how the ECU is processing that signal it's dropped down to drop down to zero now it's jumped up it's all over the place so let's get into testing this rail pressure sensor its associated wiring and the signals let's keep it nice and simple the simply diagway so that anybody can do this with basic test equipment a test light and a voltmeter so we're using again we're using the all data wiring diagram I've just cropped it and zoomed in for ease of use we've got the rail pressure sensor here we've got our ECU over here and we've got three wires going to it we have the green and violet which is a shared VREF or 5 volt circuit we've got the yellow green wire here that is a shared ground with other components and then we've got the blue signal wire off pin 2 going all the way back to the ECU pin 37 so the first thing we want to do is we need want to connect our multimeter to the battery ground so one lead onto the battery ground on a 20 volt voltage scale DC and we with the ignition on and the engine not running we want to see what we have at pin 3 here okay we are expecting to see 5 volts here with the key on okay that's our VREF what we can also do to the same battery negative we can connect our test light one end of our test light an incandescent test light that pulls between 100 and 120 milliamps make sure that you test your test lights to see what current they draw I've done multiple videos on this so go back and have a look through my channel um, tools and test equipment test methods and stuff like that so connect your your test light connected to battery ground the same battery ground as your multimeter what you want to do is just drop your test light onto this point where you're measuring voltage and the voltage should stay at 5 volts an incandescent test light a normal incandescent test light with a um, 100, 100 well 100 to 150 milliamp draw should not be able to pull a 5 volt reference down under normal circumstances I'm not saying that that's the case all the time but for 99% of cases it's perfectly safe to do this with an incandescent test light the very next test we want to do is with our multimeter still connected to battery ground we want to test at pin 1 okay so we're looking we're looking there on that on, on pin 1 we are looking to see less than well definitely less than 100 millivolts 
sorry, I've lost my thing there. So less than 100 millivolts, but to be honest, for a, for a, a signal ground, sensor signal ground, I'll be expecting to see in the region of between 20 and 40 millivolts. Whilst we've got our multimeter connected to battery ground and pin 1, what we'll do then is we'll swap our test light over onto battery positive. And what we'll do, we will just touch again on pin 1 here. And what we want to see is we want to see that incandescent test light light up and the battery voltage displayed on the multimeter to stay exactly the same. We do not expect that reading to go up. If it goes up, then we've got a problem with our ground. The final step is to measure the voltage, keeping our multimeter on battery negative. We're, we're, we're then going to put the other lead of the multimeter on pin 2, back probed. Yeah, and with the key on and the engine not being run for a while, with just residual pressure in the rail, I would expect to be measuring about half a volt. Okay, so just half a volt. Now, normally on a rail pressure sensor, we have a diagnostic voltage or a bias voltage on this wire, which gives us, if we unplug it, it would give us a circuit fault or something like that. There's lots and lots of videos on my channel um, referring to bias voltage, diagnostic voltage and stuff like that. So if we've got half a volt there with that sensor plugged in, with it back probed, all we have to do to check the wiring is good all the way back to the ECU, so that's all the way along this wire. All we should normally have to do on that signal line is unplug the sensor. Okay. So literally what we would do, we would just un unplug the sensor. Yeah. And what that will do then, that half a volt then should actually then jump up to a diagnostic voltage or a bias voltage of between 2 and 5 volts depending on the vehicle and the manufacturer and stuff like that. So I would expect to see, the minute I unplug that sensor, on that wire I would expect to see that to rise up to 5 volts. With the sensor unplugged, if I'm measuring 5 volts on my signal return, on my, on my signal wire, back to the ECU, that 5 volt can only be coming from one place, and that is this terminal here. Okay, That proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that the integrity of that wire going all the way back to the ECU is intact. It's not shorted to ground, shorted to positive or anything. So we don't even need to go all the way back to the ECU to test that. That's a very quick, simple, easy way of testing that wiring in integrity. It's not carrying any current or anything like that. So that simple test is all really that you, you should need to do. If you want to, there's another test you can do. Again, I've done, I've done countless tests of that. With the sensor disconnected and live data displayed for fuel pressure on your screen, what you can do is with your test light connected to battery positive, and remember your test light is acting as a current limiting device, so you connect one end of your test light to battery positive and just lightly touch your test light on that signal wire, on the back probe on that signal wire, and what you should see is you should see the rail pressure increase in the in the data PID. That will also tell you that the ECU is capable of processing a varying voltage down, down that line. Um, it doesn't really matter what the numbers is, so it might go to maximum, it might go to zero, depending on which way, which way the sensor works and that, but we're putting um, a very small current down that wire um, with a good quality incandescent test light there is not really any risk of damaging the ECU or, or things like that like I say this is with a good known test light that you actually know the current limiting through that test light so obviously you wouldn't do that with a 299 e by test light that may, may pull a full amp or something like that. You would only do it with a very, very low current test light. 
Um, you might, to be honest, you might even be able to do it even safer with an LED test light. So, hope you found it interesting. I hope you, any more questions at all, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Um, I'll ask all your, all your generic questions. And again, as you've seen in the annotations at the bottom of the video, there is vehicle specific technical support available by emailing technical at simplydiag.net with um, the full description of the fault that you're having, the vehicle's registration number and chassis number. Um, this is a paid for service, but it is something that I offer to subscribers of my YouTube channel. So, thanks for watching. You're awesome. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave us a like and thumbs up. Subscribe if you don't already do. Don't forget to consider www.simplydag.net. Come and join our community. And uh, we've also got the Facebook group, Simply Diag. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. You're, you, you, you're awesome.